We have the biggest craft show of our lives this weekend, so we needed to give our craft booth a holiday overhaul, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're building ourselves a Christmas cabin. <laughs> we have the biggest craft show we've ever been to this upcoming weekend and I was thinking that I didn't want to bring the metal racks that we normally use. They're super functional and they're great racks. They, they display our signs perfectly. But because this is a big show and there are tons of vendors there, I really wanted to create a booth setup that will draw some attention, catch some eyes, make you want to come in and see what's going on in this Come on little... in. Have a cup of cocoa. Yeah. Take a load <laughs> off. Warm yourself up by the fireplace. <laughs> so I envisioned that I wanted this to have a wood feel to it. I didn't want to use the metal racks, I wanted the wood. So I envisioned a roof to go over it. And then Garrett was like, what do you mean a roof? I was like, well I want it to have like a little overhang, a little roof. And, and I was thinking <laughs> lemonade yeah. stand. Oh, were you? Yeah, lemonade stand, and you're like, no, bigger. Bigger, yes. But not the size of the full size of the booth or anything, but enough that I wanted it to have a tin roof. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, how are we going to do this at the craft show? I'm not trying to build a cabin in the craft show. Yeah, there's no room to build a cabin in the craft show. <laughs> So we designed a lightweight version of what I had in my head. Now, to be honest, I had more in my head. I wanted more slats than what I actually got to build, but we had to keep it lightweight. We had to keep it easy to set up and take down, and it still had to be functional to display all of our signs and fit in our 8x10 booth space. So it's not going to be a real roof. You're not going to be able to really camp out underneath this thing. Yeah. It's not going to be like not gonna... a hunting cabin. <laughs> You're not going to be protected from the wilderness or the weather. It's going to be very drafty and anything more than five or six wet leaves you, you might you might experience a collapse. I mean it's going to stand during the craft show but it is meant to be easy set up, easy takedown. On the go. Half cabin will travel. <laughs> Step one, we're going to gather all of our supplies. Well, we needed a tin roof. Tin roof! Rusted. Well, it won't be rusty, but it will be light. Mm. We needed four 4x4x8s. Four by four by These things were super heavy, super wet and slimy. Six 1x4x8 furring strips. A 2x2x8. Two by two by a 2x4 by sheet of 3 8 inch ply. A 3 8 inch plywood strips that we used from our last project, two inch screws, an inch of five eighth inch screws, and a metal blade for our jigsaw. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna start with the tin roof. Rested. <laughs> we started with the tin roof because we felt like this was gonna be the hardest part and we needed to know exactly what size the frame will be. Now these braces or these clamps really didn't do anything. It still felt vibrating. So uh, we decided to use these sandbags and it really did cut down on the vibration. It was really sturdy. It was pretty easy to cut through, especially with the metal blade. Getting over the humps was a hump, but otherwise it cut like butter. Yeah, it was great. We added this blue tape to hopefully prevent some shards. So we're just cutting both of these panels in half. And this time we decided to go face down and try to get that flat spot on the saw, more flat spot on the saw than the first time. And this was a breeze. I mean, this was super easy to cut, that, like no problems. It was just very loud. Right. Yeah, you can't see how loud it is here. We measured out how wide it would be. And after one interlocking panel, it measures at exactly eight feet. I'm going to trim the plywood down to 19 inches by 40 inches to make our next cuts a lot easier. We're going to draw a line three and a half inches up on each corner. This is going to leave room for our frame piece. Then we're going to draw a diagonal line to create two identical frame sides. We should just be able to cut this in half and have two tin roof sides. I swap to a wood cutting blade and then use the jigsaw and my eagle eye to split the line. We have two identical pieces. <laughs> Step 
three. We're gonna start the stain. Well, Kim's gonna start the stain. <laughs> now I'm just staining our wooden slats. This is that made out of that 3 8 inch plywood. There's nothing smooth about these boards. These boards are super rough, but this stain sponge does a great job just putting stain down in every nook and crack and crevice, which is okay because I want this to be a rustic look. I mean, even if it snags, the, the sponge did look pretty rough at the end, but it did a great job. <laughs> Step four. Time to paint, but not with this brush. Now I'm gonna paint these boards. We're gonna use that same scraping technique that we used the other day for our wall. The old squirt and scrape. It is, but look how great it looks. I mean, it's just so easy and I just love that rustic look that it gives. And I think it's gonna be perfect for this rustic. Like rustic Christmas. <laughs> rustic Christmas in the woods. Our, Christmas our, in the cabin. Our rustic manger. Yeah, it's our, it's our rustic cabin. Yeah, there you go. Our sign cabin. Step five, time to assemble. This is where we start making our fake cabin, but we're gonna do it right here in the warehouse. We're gonna do our whole setup and like mock it up. Yeah, gotta make sure it's gonna work. We're gonna start with the plywood and four furring strips and the two by two. I'm gonna make this just like I make a ramp. We're gonna rib it out and then lay the roof on. So I'm gonna attach the furring strips to the back sides vertically, flush with the edge using those one and five eighths inch screws. I'm gonna do the same in the front, stand it vertically and lay it flush with the front edge and screw, the, screw that right in. I'm gonna try to keep it flush on both sides. Do the same thing on the other side, keeping it flush with the back and keeping it flush with the front in the front. Let's give this roof something to bite into and we're gonna use those furring strips and we're gonna attach those so that they're flush with the incline using those same one and five eighth inch drywall screws. We're attaching one at the bottom and one at the top, just sticking with the incline, keeping them flush. Now this part is usually easier with a second person, but Kim <laughs> was off painting. She was getting ready for the craft show. I measured halfway down and mark the incline, and this is where I'm gonna put the two by two. I'm gonna use two of those drywall screws again so that this thing won't turn on me. And I'm gonna to try to keep it flush with the, the incline. And I'm gonna do the other side also, the right side, same as the left side. You're pretty impressive though, all by yourself. I'm pretty pr impressed with all the painting that you did in, in the time that it took me to build this thing, so. <laughs> Let's add a brace in the upper back part, you know, just to give it a little bit more stability. So we're gonna use one of those furring strips and attach it on both sides, flush with the back, kind of like the bottom. And this board was really warped, so I had to give the old uh, reach around. <laughs> and this is what it looks like all <laughs> ribbed out. Uh, like I said, I built it like I was gonna build a ramp. Time to add the tin roof. I'm just gonna lay it out, try to even it up, and then I'm gonna pin it together using those same drywall screws. You don't need to pre-drill the holes. If you have it spinning hard enough and fast enough, it will catch and pierce and go right through that tin. Yeah, looks good. All right, let's stand it up. We're gonna add the feet, but I'm gonna use a furring strip to kinda level out the feet while I attach those to the top. I'm gonna attach the top using some two-inch screws give it a little more bite to it, a little more strength. I'm gonna do both sides the same way. I'm also gonna measure how much I'm gonna to need to cut off the front feet. It's 10 and 5 eighths inches that I'm gonna to need to cut off the front feet. So I'm gonna finish up adding the back feet and I'm gonna cut 10 and 5 eighths inch off of two of the four by fours. These things were wet. They were so wet and slimy. We just stood this up and then put the feet in place. It was pretty easy. <laughs> this is touch and go for a minute, just because we had to stand it up and then quickly grab a four by four to prop it up. <laughs> and then it was pretty heavy, just one person holding one corner. 
I adjusted the back leg. It was a little wonky. Now we're just gonna add the slats. These are gonna be dual purpose here. One, it's gonna help stabilize the sides. And then two, this is what we're gonna use to actually hang the sides on. So we're just putting three on each side. I'd love to put them all the way down, but I don't have that many and I don't want this to be too heavy. I want it to be semi portable and easy to set up and take down. Now you might recognize these from um, our very first craft show setup. We built these to display our signs and we've actually had them in our shop um, just kind of sitting in the corner because we stopped bringing them. They're a little heavy, heavy and cumbersome. But for this project, they work perfectly to be supports for the end of the slats. They're great stabilizers. They help keep the whole thing steady so it doesn't tip over. And then they'll display our signs just like they did before. And it kind of matches the theme. I mean, we didn't know it, but we were prepping for this years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the same paint technique. We used the same paint technique back then that we did for the slats. Yeah, there it is. There's our little, uh, our Christmas cabin. <laughs> it's our Christmas cabin, Kim. Step six. Let's break it down and pack it up. We'll meet you on the other side. Breakdown was pretty easy. I mean, we just took it apart in reverse of the way that we put it together, but we did leave the roof together. Uh, we're gonna move the roof all at one piece. Everything seemed to fit in the trailer perfectly. Well, we could only fit three wagons in, but we can come back for the rest after we do our setup. And here we are at our booth space at the craft show. We had a little surprise. We knew the booth was eight by 10, but what we learned when we got there was it's really 10 by eight. So we had this thing 10 feet deep and we had to make a few adjustments here. So we're going to assemble it and put it all together so we know what we're working with. And then we're going to come back and adjust the end pieces and then just kind of push them in. So the great thing about this was where the slats were, it was easy just to slide them in. And now it's pretty much an 8x8 eight eight booth. Yeah, it's an 8x8. Eight eight. Step seven, and now we have the accents. Well, we gotta rebuild our cabin in our craft booth space, and then we're gonna add our garland, our lights. This is how we make it a Christmas cabin. Even a little fake snow on top. Light snow. Light, light snow. A light dusting. Again, this is for novelty use only. <laughs> Nothing more than felt snow. All right, now that we have it all set up, we're gonna go ahead and start hanging our signs up. Um, just doing a little organizing, make sure everything looks nice and neat. Garrett attached the back braces to the back so that it doesn't wobble side to side. I just didn't want it collapsing on us. This is for novelty use only, remember? Right, right. We can't have a bunch of snow on top there. It's not going to support that kind of weight. But we are adding our little garland and our lights. This is lighted garland. You'll see us plug it in in a moment. And then these are some Edison bulbs. Give it an extra, oh, there's our snow. There's our snow. Some no. light cotton snow. If I would have went double layer with that felt <laughs> snow, it might have collapsed on whoever was underneath it, so. We added some lights, hung our sign. This thing is popping. Look at Look this. At that. It feels so uh, cabin-esque. Now that pole in the back is gonna support some additional uh, inventory. We're gonna hang signs back there um, like you would hang them on a clothesline and that way they don't have to sit in the wagons and we'll have them right behind us to restock as people purchase. All right, what did you guys think? You guys have any advice? Anything that we could have done differently? Anything else that would have helped make it holiday themed? on the cheap. Is it overkill? Did I go too far? Looking around at the other booths, yeah. it was overkill. <laughs> As I looked at some of the other booths, I was like, okay, I wanted ours to, to I, I did want it to stand out, but. Oh yeah, it stands out. Yeah, you're gonna, you're like gonna come down thumb. the aisle and see us, see our little mini cabin yeah, down You're gonna the wanna end. come in and warm up. Just warm up next to the fire. You know what? And then when they want that cocoa, the funny thing is right across yeah, from us literally. is a lady selling cocoa. Uh -huh. Go over there and get you get a hot cocoa. cup of cocoa. Come back over here. Go over there and get yourself a, a rocking chair. <laughs> Go over there and pick yourself up an afghan. Come on back and I'll tell you a little story. So after I set it all up, I was like, okay, I get it. Now we've got a cool little wood theme. But I was like, but it needs a door. Where can we yeah. put a door? Yeah, she wants a door. Yeah, but then Garrett had a great idea. We do have a cool door backdrop. 
that I think we're gonna hang back there tomorrow and uh, right before the show starts and then I think that's gonna give it that little like Oomph. yeah I think yeah. it's gonna bring the door sign theme back around we'll show you we'll show you on social media speaking of hanging doors and hanging with our hangers oh we love you guys you know we love our patrons so if you are a part of our patron group and our our hangers any yeah know. We, we, we know who you are Helen, one of our patrons, has decided we're using the term hanger, so come join us. Hang out with and, the hangers. Yeah, hang with the hangers on Tuesdays. We build, uh, we don't build, we paint new projects every Tuesday live. And Testing then, them out, seeing if they work, see what they look like. Yeah, it's a new design every Tuesday. Um, so join Those us. top tier patrons get all the free SVGs. They, they sure do. All the goods. All the goods in one of these t-shirts right here. One of these fancy t-shirts. We're about out of time. We gotta head over to our craft booth and finish setting it up, get ready for all of our customers. So we'll see you next Friday where we'll do it, build it and make it again. Oh, and don't forget about Tuesdays where we're doing Test Cut Tuesdays TCT. <laughs> I'm always on the edge of my seat. Do you come saw last us? week's, you know that I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Sometimes <laughs> I go too far. He fell out of his chair. Do join us because today is Thursday, craft show starts tomorrow, so keep an eye on our social media. Come and say hello, take a peek at what we got going on. Yeah, come say hi. Hello visitors! <laughs>